D-A-M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere Get ready for a chat with the chair I'm Joe Etling, chair of the Vigo County Democratic Central Committee and welcome to the award-winning chat with the chair I know you're confused. We don't have the award-winning blazer with us today, but uh, we are being very conservative as we are approaching Election Day. Believe it or not, we are one week away from Election Day. Hopefully, you're getting out and voting. We've got an awesome show today. Of course, we had our great candidates out working so hard in West Terre Haute. I want to thank all of them for being out and doing such a great job on a cleanup there. I also want to shout out to Colleen Chestnut, who great committee person who has been awesome in organizing cleanup efforts throughout the fall for us and we've uh, made it quite a presence I think throughout the community and notwithstanding the fact that it's an election year these candidates and office holders are doing this year in and year out and we haven't had an opportunity to really highlight their efforts throughout the election cycle but I think it's important to note that notwithstanding that it's an election year these people are donating their times and working for the community on a yearly basis, irrespective of a campaign. So we appreciate that, and I hope that you've seen them out in your community, and we so much appreciate their efforts. I want to remind you that if you have not had an opportunity to vote yet, there's plenty of opportunity to come up. Now, believe it or not, we've had in the neighborhood of 6,000 people early vote. Now, I know that sounds like a big number, but we have over 75,000 registered voters in Vigo County. So there's work to do. And I ask you out there in our community, if you'd step forth and vote, this is so important. I've had the honor of being the chair of this Vigo County Democratic Party for over 26 years. And I know it's cliche, but there's never been any more election than there is this time. From the top of the ticket on down, we need you to show up and vote. So if you've not taken that opportunity, I can't ask you, encourage you anymore to please vote. And I want to point out so many of the opportunities that you have. Of course, the early vote centers that have been voting to this point in time have been the Hote City Center and the Vigo County Annex. Starting November 1st, which is today, uh, there are a number of other sites that are also in addition to those two available. That would be the Meadows Shopping Mall, the Vigo County Solid Waste Management, the operator engineers, our good friends there, the 841, West Vigo Elementary Conference Center, the IBEW Local Union 725 uh, are good friends there as well. So those are new sites that are going to be open for early voting from today through Election Day and will be open on Election Day. And then of course on Election Day, and according, in addition to those sites and the Hote City Center and Vigo County Annex, uh, the Plumbers and Steamfitters Local Union 157, great group of uh, union members there will be open on election day. The Booker T. Washington uh, facility on uh, November 8th, Vigo County Public Library, the American Legion Post 104, Sandcut Firehouse, the Indiana State University Student Union Building, the Pimento Firehouse, Negotian Firehouse, and Maryland Community Church. So those are all open on election day, November the 8th. So if you're a traditionalist and want to wait till election day, Got a lot of options to vote. And remember, you can go to any of those sites and vote in Vigo County. You're not restricted to your own precinct area to vote. You can go to any of those. And we, we encourage you so much. Uh, the polls are, of course, open till 6 p.m. Uh, it's so important that you vote. We've had a number of great candidates on here to talk about the importance of voting, and hopefully you'll get out and do that. In addition to a great Democratic ticket, the school board is on the ballot, and of course, that's so important to our young people and to our entire community, so we encourage you to get out and also vote for school board. So that's, if you do vote a straight ticket, remember you've got to still go and vote for the school board, so please do that. And I know that those uh, candidates have been out working so very hard. We've got a great show tonight, and uh, some of our great uh, office holders and candidates, including our great commissioner, Brendan Kearns, is going to be with us, and uh, Nancy Alsup who is going to be an awesome county council person when she's elected to represent uh, her district. Uh, we've also uh, heard from Stacy Todd, and, and we appreciate uh, the others that came out, including members of our central committee, our city clerk, Michelle Edwards, and Kim Warland, as well as Noah Gamble, candidate for uh, judge of the Vigo Superior Court Division I. So 
Uh, we hope you are having a great night. Hope everybody had a safe and happy Halloween. So sit back and enjoy a great chat with the chair. We appreciate you joining us. And remember, like us, share us, and tell your friends to tune in because what we're talking about here is important to our community. And we do appreciate all that uh, you do to tune in and, and watch us and share us with your friends. So thank you for tuning in and enjoy our show. When you get elected to a local office, I mean, you're, the, the people you're serving are, are your neighbors and your family and, you know, the people you know all your life, Definitely. you know, it makes you, makes you really conscious of doing a good job. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I don't care if I know them or not. You know, Vicki, I'm going to help them. I know. People, and you, you and know, they just, this, when you, when you're in an office, I walk by and I see you sitting in there and you're talking <laughs> to some, you know, person comes in for help and you, you got them, you got them in your arms. You're just helping them. Oh, yeah. You walk them to where they need to go. And, that's you know, right. Get, get it introduce them to someone you know that's going to help them because they walk in and maybe they walk right up to your office first yeah and that's the wrong yeah. office but you know where they I need to go I just take them where they go yeah where they need to go and being on the council I mean you know you're helping every office in the county and that's it's really uh, makes you feel good to know that you've done something for every office holder there yeah that yeah. you know and and you, you, it's sometimes it's difficult when you don't have enough money to go around to help them the way they need to, they really need it but you do the best you can yeah you got to help where you know they're going to need it right then and then maybe the next time you're going to help them next year yeah. you know so you know when we were in that fire prevention parade over in West Terre Haute I saw you with your little grandbaby <laughs> I thought you know that's that's a big burden for us to say how can we help the future that's my priority. Definitely, because I want it to be nice for her when she comes up, you know, make our community nice. And, you know, I'd love to see it. Western Hode, I can see it coming a little bit at a it's, time. It's growing it's big growing, time. Yes. And Isn't I'm it so, nice? Yes, yeah. proud of that, you know. And so. you know who's really done a lot to help Western Hode is Sister Dorothy. Yes. Isn't yes, she sister, something? Yes. The, the sisters out there has been wonderful. They are, they're they a are, blessing. And for, for all our lives, I mean, they've done wonderful things. But boy, Sister Dorothy, she built that. She's the, a go-getter. Oh, I'll tell you, when she sets her mind to it, it's going to happen. happen. They got the pharmacy. You know, she got that housing center out mm -hmm. there. They've got curbs. You know, she got after all the, all the leaders, and they got that connect right over here. It, it's remarkable. What we need. It is. Yes, what we need. I never, like that, I know? never drive across a grade that I don't see a lot of people walking on that. On oh, that. it's they do. beautiful. They're really using mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and I'm proud of that. I'm yeah. so happy for them. Well, having you so. on the council will make such a difference, you know, because you, you know, your opponent is really an obstructionist. I mean. We need somebody that, that works for the people, not against the people. Well, I'm always for the people. I know you are. And my community, because I love it all. It's in your so, heart. Yeah. It's built into your DNA. I like you it. You know, your whole family is just that way. They yeah, help people. They I know they help they people don't. who can't even afford to pay them. I know exactly. they do. Exactly. They just, but they don't let that out there. You I know, know what I mean. I, they just keep it to themselves. Yeah. You don't need recognized for well, what you do. It's yeah. right, and there, and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, it always has helped the whole, not just West Terre Haute, the whole but, county. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is. And you know you've, you've always stayed here, and your husband Paul's the same way. Oh, yeah. Paul's, Paul's <laughs> a wonderful person. He's always helping people, you he, know. He really he has, you know. Heart. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I mean, you know, there was an aberration in politics, and, and people uh, who should have won didn't win. But that, I think those days are over and people come back to their senses and they realize, you know, you, you look to the Democratic Party as the people of, uh, the, the party that helps the working people, the ordinary people. And that's, that's who we are. Yep. We're just ordinary people. And, you know, we, we were born here and we're still here. Yep, we'll be here. Yeah, we will be here. <laughs> well, we'll try to make it better. That's right. People. And I'll tell you, Nancy, you are, you know, my heart's with you. And I'll do anything well, I can to help you. you. Too. You're the best. <laughs> you take care. Okay.
now cleanups I've been involved with long before I became commissioner. We, um, with the Wabashiki Wetlands, that was one of my um, big projects I was involved with. We started doing cleanups with ISU there. But I think it's important just to do what you can to clean up the community, whether it's taking a trash bag on an afternoon, walking along a roadside. But now, being in this role, working with our solid waste board members, we were able to get together and figure out how we can do 24 cleanups throughout the townships. That's two cleanups per township each year, a spring and a fall. Today we're in Sugar Creek Township, West Terre Haute area, and um, you know it, it's a, been a very successful project. What we've noticed that since we have implemented these township cleanups, we have so many reduced calls of coming in about illegal dumping. And, you know, it is expensive to take stuff to the landfill. A lot of times people can't do it. So when we bring the dumpsters here, as we're seeing right now, somebody's bringing, I think, a chair, a sofa chair. That's something that could have maybe ended up in a county road somewhere. So these cleanups do provide benefits to the county as a whole, um, and it does make, a, make the environment so much nicer. So when I come out here, you know, a lot of times uh, politicians will see these opportunities to come, take a picture of themselves, and then they take off. They'll post it on social media to imply that they've been out here. As my guys will tell you, today's a short day for me, but I hop into the excavator because I like driving it. But I like doing the hands-on stuff to be able to help them. To me, that's important because when you're voted in to be in an office of public service, you need to make sure that you work alongside with the people that, that, is part of, that are part of your team. So that's a big reason why I do this. And yes, I will take a picture. I'll put it on social media. But I do that to let people know that, hey, these events are going on and I want them to feel comfortable bringing their goods to be thrown away. So something kind of neat about the township cleanups is that it brings people from the townships together. For example, our first really big one that we had when we did this was in Nevins Township. And while people would bring trash to dump off, it didn't become in a reunion friends who haven't seen each other for a long time would end up hanging out and talking. So people were looking forward to the fall cleanup in that township because it was a gathering point for them. Um, you know, as social um, events have changed over the last few years, it's kind of weird to see that maybe a township cleanup is a new social event. But it does. It brings people together. They're cleaning up where they live. They're helping neighbors. Um, we've been involved with, let's say, some elderly people have some stuff in the yard. They don't have the ability to get that to us. Neighbors will rally up. They'll get those goods, and then we throw them away. Or we'll drive the excavator over, as we have done here this morning, um, and pick up items and bring them. So, yeah, the township cleanups are so much more than just a cleanup. It's a gathering of good people in those townships. Um, originally, the township cleanups were restricted to living in that township. We've broadened that. So anybody in Vigo County can go. So if somebody's in Prairie Creek Township, they need to get rid of a couch, they can bring it here today at Sugar Creek Township, and we'll properly dispose of it. Within two hours, we've already exchanged two full dumpsters. And as you can see, more people are coming, and we're still early in the morning. So it shows how effective these cleanups are. So when I was working for the Department of Natural Resources, we purchased most of the land that you see around here. And at one time, that was highly controversial because the residents thought the state was coming in and taking their ground. What they are now saying is, my God, this is beautiful. I mean, today, you and I can walk out here and we're going to see bald eagles. We're going to see deer walking through, which is no big deal. We're going to see river otters and other animals that you wouldn't have seen because there's a lot of illegal dumping going on in this area. So when we started developing the Wabashiki wetlands, several different hats here, we had volunteer groups come out to do cleanups, whether it be along the grade where our new connector trail is or um, in these bigger areas. Um, he's taking my excavator, darn it. That means I don't get to drive it for a little bit. But yes, um, so these cleanups do beautify those areas. So here we're right in the heart of Wabashiki Fish and Wildlife Area. The area is pretty clean because we've had so many cleanups here, but, um, but we're doing great. An added benefit to the taxpayers of Vigo County is it costs about $90 per truck bed load to be disposed of here at the landfill. You know, here you can bring a trailer, your trucks, as long as it's not commercial materials, you're saving hundreds of dollars um, by doing this. So we do reinvest our tipping fees through the Solid Waste District. Um, the board directs where that money goes, and by bringing that money back into the community, that saves taxpayers a lot of money. The recycling program for glass has been phenomenal. When Indiana State University dropped it, our board got together and we figured out how we could move forward. Our director, Karen Nasser, he was relentless. He kept trying to find solutions. He had a couple lined up. They failed. He was able to secure one. And it is so busy now that yesterday I was at the recycling facility. Um, they were bringing in a whole nether dumpster um, because the current one was full. And the current one is as big as what you see. Actually, it's bigger than the one that you see right here. 
So people had a lot of glass built up because they had no place to take it. As soon as we hit that green light, it just started filling up and uh, people were so happy that they can bring their glass even with the lids on it with the labels on there you can put them in that dumpster and it is getting recycled we're looking at other locations the challenge with remote dump sites is that they are not observed and you know the city of Terre Haute the mayor tried it here at City Hall it didn't work because people were not bringing recycled materials they're bringing their trash and if you have a, a let's say a a thing of recycled material and there's a pizza box in there that has food residue on there that whole lot is considered contaminated recyclers won't take it so that ultimately goes into the landfill so the board with the support of the mayor made the right decision to pull that recycling drop-off area because of the abuse that was going on hopefully when we get the new south unit opened up um, near the old Pfizer property we will be able to do a monitored recycling center um, I can see that possibly being next year in two years um, but the board will continue to move forward with trying to get that open to make it easier. Vigo County is a big county and you know people on the far south end it's a struggle and a challenge to get to the far north end. Um, well not far north end but the north end um, to drop off their goods. But the, um, we do have convenient hours. We have an evening hour set up Saturdays occasionally. We have e-waste days so our director Karen Nasser um, and Philip try to make it convenient for everybody. So another awesome chat with the chair. We appreciate you tuning in and of course, we want to remind you that there's some upcoming events that you still have an opportunity to join in and see so many of your great candidates and office holders this week. Thursday, November the 3rd, is the annual Harry S. Truman Dinner. The honoree is William G. Smock, and we hope that you come out. That's going to be at the St. George Social Center. Social hour will be at 6 p.m. and dinner at 7 p.m. Um, if you are interested in tickets, please reach out, and we'll be happy to accommodate you. It's going to be a great night. On Friday, November the 4th, at our friends over at the MVETS, we are hosting a rally in the valley. And we're going to have our great local candidates, as well as the state ticket there. That's going to start at 5.30 p.m. Commissioner Brendan Kearns promises to have the hot dog cart out there. World famous hot dog cart will be there. So there'll be great Democrat food and refreshments there. Somebody has indicated there's going to be some good music, so we're going to let the dumb, Dems out that night, so please come out. We're going to have a great crowd, get people excited about the opportunity to vote, so please do so. And of course, on Saturday, then November the 5th, starting at 10 a.m., the Central Committee of the Vigo County Democratic Party is hosting one last get-out-the-vote effort. So we will be phone banking, we will be walking precincts, and this is just one of the items that we're passing out, which represents the entire local ticket. And, and we encourage everybody to take a look at this. This is just one of the handouts that's being utilized. I know you get a lot of things at your door as well as in the mail. This, though, represents our great local ticket as well as all the, web, uh, the vote sites uh, that are available to you. There's also another piece that's being distributed which highlights local Democrats and their message as to why they're Democrats. And we, we thank so much those who have uh, participated in that, the Short family, Candace McDonald, uh, Bernie McGee, and the Sackbun family, just great Democrats. And, and if you read that piece, it was, it's a beautiful piece. And those individuals and those families suggest to everybody in this community why they're Democrats and why they're proud to be Democrats. And I know there's a lot of commentary, particularly nationally, about the Republican and, and Democratic Party. But I can say again that about the pride I have in being a Democrat, and those families do as well, and they articulate for all of us from a local standpoint why they're Democrats. And the one thing about the Democratic Party, it's, it's held true to its philosophies and standards, and it's represented working people. I think that the candidates and office holders People like Councilperson Vicki Wager summarize so well over the course of their lifetimes and their families how they have represented the Democratic Party in their personal lives and their public lives. And they continue to do so. And I'm proud of their efforts. And I ask that you come out and vote for, for these candidates because they're going to continue to represent your interest as a taxpayer and a member of this community. If you need a ride to the polls, I encourage you to call 812-208-4083. We're going to get you a ride to the polls to make sure everybody has an opportunity to vote. We're going to, we're going to highlight that on our, on our chat here, so you'll see that stream. We've got all kinds of technology with this group that we've got. Crack crew here at the chat. 
But uh, this is so important that everybody have that opportunity, and of course there are a number of, of chances to do that. Uh, we had a, a great opportunity to phone bank over the last few days. We've got our candidates continuing to do that, so if you're getting calls, uh, please uh, give them any suggestions that you have, but we want to get people out to vote, and remember to tell your family and friends to do so. This is the time, this is the election, and on November 9th, it's going to be too late. So make sure you have your voice heard by exercising your very important right to vote. Uh, we also want to just thank out, reach out to all of you and all that have been associated with uh, helping to produce and create uh, the chat with the chair. I want to thank again our executive producer, Vicki Weger, our great team, Don Wilson and Jay Scott. We couldn't do this without them, but this has been a tremendous opportunity particularly during this election cycle, to talk with you about these important races from the top of the ticket on down. And we've had some awesome people come in here to visit with you, and hopefully that's been educational for you. But this is the time to make sure that you vote. And uh, as our handout indicates, vote Democratic, and we, we would ask and encourage you to do that. So again, we appreciate you all tuning in for this edition of Chat with the Chair. Hope that you have a great rest of your evening. God bless you all, and we'll see you on election night. M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch